We are here at the Fleetwood Country Cruise Inn in London, Ontario with Tom Sarmento, General Lee, lead mechanic. Correct. Yeah, great show. Oh, it's fantastic. And look at the weather. <laughs> Couldn't ask for better. And you've got a General Lee right here. You've got a General Lee here. And uh, Rob uh, Murphy brought his in here. So we had a uh, nice uh, backdrop. And, uh, you know, we're just having a great time here. So you're meeting the fans here today, signing autographs. People probably come here with a million different questions, but the but they must always want to know about those infamous jumps. Well, where you, you know, yeah. the number one question is, is where's Kathy? Let's hear the horn. <laughs> well, Kathy's not here, and the horn, well, I hope we don't hear it too much. Right. But well, the infamous jumps, yes. I mean, uh, uh, Al Wyatt uh, Jr., he went uh, 237 feet. You know, back in the day uh, on Granny Annie, uh, it was the episode. Uh, when he jumped, he had flip-flops on, he had a pair of shorts, helmet, neck brace, and five-point. And he went that, kind of, went that kind of distance. I mean, nobody has gone that far yet other than, than Al Wyatt. So how do they do that? I mean, is, is that like just the car, or are they using some sort of a, a slingshot, or what are they doing? No, it's all car. It's all, uh, all car, ramp, and the biggest thing is, is the stunt driver. He believes that that car will go that far. So we build him a car that he is very comfortable in. They do not like to hear any noises. They're very superstitious. But if you, if you do that for them, let them do a couple approaches, they're comfortable in that car, they'll make that car sail. So when these things jump, I mean, this is like a one-time thing because after they've gone through that, you're not using that for much no, else. No, it's, right? it's done. We only used them one time. Yeah. They, were, they were expendable. We did more damage than we could buy a new one for. So, and it's already written off on the show. So, and the liability. There's, there's other things that could be gone wrong that we couldn't see. But, uh, so that was just a standard. The car is used once. It was charged off on the show. The next stop, remove the safety equipment, tires and batteries, and it went to the crusher. How do you prepare a car for a jump like that? Well, I give myself a good 440. I like the 383s also, uh, but Al Wyatt Jr., he preferred a 440 engine. He preferred 14-inch tires and rims on the front, 15 on the back. Um, most of the guys didn't care for the console shifter. They'd rather have it right there where you can, on the column, where they could actually see it and, and pull it into gear. And um, like I say, it's just making them uh, comfortable because you're strapped in that car and then you're waiting for, you know, uh, roll cameras and, you know, camera one, two, three, four, possibly five. You're sitting in that car waiting for that and then all of a sudden goes, Camera four, jam. So everything comes to a stop. You're still buckled into that car, and then they start it all over again. But you, you want to get out of the things just as soon as you can. I mean, your heart rate is definitely up. I don't care who you are or anything. Your heart rate is up. And uh, then once it's all over, the, you know what? I could have went a little faster. <laughs> it sounds a lot like launching a rocket. Yes, it is, you know, and it's just it's just a glide. I mean, and the car comes down, and we try to make them land a little bit on the nose so that that actually absorbs all the shock before it hits the driver. It's just like in NASCAR. Those cars are made, when they hit a wall, they crumble up first before it gets to the driver. Even back in the 70s and 80s, that's what we used to do. So you put a roll cage in them, but you kind of, did you engineer crumple zones into the well, front no, then? Well, we, no, we, did, we didn't have time to do that. Uh, we used a good, uh, A.J. Thrasher built these cages, and uh, they were very stout. We checked the cages once they are done to see if there was any kind of a flaw or anything in that, which we didn't have. But come to think about the superstitious thing, A.J. used to chew tobacco. He's a big old guy. He was a furrier when, when he was younger. And he's chew that tobacco. Well, he'd take a wad of that tobacco and he'd put it right in the middle of the dash. And it'd be dripping down there and it'd just get hardened and dry. Not one of the stunt guys would remove 
that tobacco. <laughs> It'd be bad luck. And you know, other things that we did is each one of the ramps had horseshoes. So AJ put a horseshoe on it with going up on the ramps for the stunt guys. You know, our pipe ramps, our jump ramps, and everything like that. Uh, there's a lot of superstition in that. Probably helps. Well, and you figure, you know, we were doing it for six years, you know, so, you know, sometimes two or three jumps in one episode. So uh, there was a lot to be said about that. Even if it's something psychological with the driver, it, you know, that, that helps too. And how much of a factor was the driver in these jumps? Was it all mathematics and well, physics or was the driver a factor? The dri driver's a factor. He could overrule anybody on if he wanted more or less weight. Uh, he usually went with what we decided, and there would be a group of us, uh, you know, with Paul Baxley making the final decision on the weight. But when we're talking about final decision on the weight, it might be a difference of 50 pounds, you know. But, uh, you know, Alan, he was a little bit bigger, so, you know, we had a little bit more, you know, weight in the trunk. Uh, Corey Eubanks, uh, you know, he's about 165, 170 pounds. Alan, 250. So it makes a little bit of difference, and then you got to take in also the uh, motor torque. There's that There's horn. There's that horn. <laughs> now where's Kathy? <laughs> but uh, the motor torque, because it's going to want to go over to the uh, to the uh, right, you know. Uh, and when you're sailing that far, you know, and uh, but our guys, you know, they were very good. When they left that ramp, they were off the throttle. They didn't blow them up in the air. A lot of them had blue smoke, but that's from the oil filter and the front hitting the K-frame and shearing off, and then the oil going back on the exhaust. You see a blue smoke. But um, as far as I'm concerned, they have a lot of talent. I just give them the car that they want. The talent and the jump is up to them. They can do not just, they want to do. Yeah, not just talent. Those guys are brave. Well, they are, and because they're going to be sore. Yeah. We're not going to hurt them. We're not, we don't want to draw blood. No broken bones, you know. But they got to work the next day. So we try to give them the safest car as possible and make them feel as comfortable. And you know, then once it's over, then it's all time for the attaboys. You know, I've heard, I've heard a lot of guys um, online saying, "Well, it's terrible that they destroyed all those cars because now we're not going to be able to buy any, and now they're too expensive." What do you have to say to guys? who complain about you having destroyed that many, like 317? 317. Well, there was like 100,000 of those cars made. There was more people killed in drunk driving in those cars than we'd ever wreck. And as far as the popularity, if it wouldn't have been painted orange, had an 01 on it, it wouldn't be worth a dime. Those cars, we could buy them for 500 bucks a piece on the street. An RT. So what are, what are you doing now? Because I know that you've been on the road sometimes. The show on television might be over, but the Duke's legend lives on, the mania lives on, the fans are still out there, and you're still greeting them, and I think you're still on occasion even jumping a car. No, jumping's gone. That's done. I did the, my last one in 2009. It was a team van, and it was a little sore on that, so fractured my spine so that that was the last of it because I'm 70 years old now but I just got back from uh, five weeks in Europe uh, I was over in Ireland I had a, a car in Northern Ireland uh, one in Ireland one in Germany and one in Holland and uh, so we did a photo shoot with the uh, castle that the, in Trim Ireland it had this fantastic archway and six years ago we did it and we were going to film in that archway but it, it rained and we were going to tear up all their lawn and stuff and they were nice enough to do it. Well we got a permit to go ahead and bring the car in there did another shoot. So we did that shoot and then it should be in a magazine in, uh, out of Los Angeles uh, either the end of the year or next year. And then I went to Holland and we did all the tulips were in bloom and we had a farmer let us bring the, the car into the tulip beds. And then we did some of the old windmills, so, you know, we get to do that kind of stuff. But just fantastic people over in, uh, in Europe. I mean, uh, the following is just unbelievable. I'm going to ask you uh, one last question. I okay. know lots of people here. It's a little bit controversial, but I want your opinion on it, and you know where I'm going. Yeah, I know. I, I just want your opinion on 
on the flag on the roof of the General Lee. What do you what do you think of that? Should well, it come off or should it stay on? Well, it should stay on. It was a battle flag. It had nothing to do with race or anything else like that. You know, like like I always say, it was a battle flag. The car went out to do battle on the short tracks on the weekends. And if you really want to debate on that flag, you just go talk to Mr. Ben Jones. He knows all the political I've, I've aspects read some of that. Of the quotes and I've seen him in some videos. Yes, so I have a yeah. pretty good idea what he's what he but, thinks. Right, and you know, nothing was said uh, 35 years ago and stuff like that. It's just, it's just some of those people, you know, being in the wrong place, wrong time with a, with a flag, you know. But it was a battle flag, you know, and it meant nothing, uh, you know, to us on the show. I mean, we never even give it a second thought. Yeah, it, I guess it depends on how you or someone, you know, maybe superimposing a meaning on something. Correct. And, you know, that's heritage on, you know, different parts. I mean, that's what our country was based on, on, on freedom and, you know, First Amendment rights. So, you know, but like I say, is if you want to debate somebody, <laughs> Mr. Ben Jones is the man to talk to. He's a con He was a congressman for two terms. Well, you know, I think the show, too, and we talked about this before the last time we spoke, it, it was really kind of family oriented right yes. it's a g-rated it's a g-rated show which cartoons. is why it's still popular today cartoons aren't even g-rated anymore yeah. you know yeah. and you watch these kids growing up with that stuff but you know there was no blood there was nobody getting shot uh, you know it was fun it was, it was slapstick humor we all had fun made fun of everybody and just had a good time yeah well i Hope maybe someday you come out of retirement, maybe not jump yourself, but maybe help somebody. You should come here and jump a car out in the well, back. We, we discussed that with uh, with Steve uh, a couple years ago, you know. Maybe we could get somebody to come out here instead of doing a big jump or maybe do a turnover or something because it's expensive. And yes, I do spend a lot of money on the cars and uh, because they got to be done right. And that's the only way I'm going to build them, uh, you know. And if, if it's too much for the budget then we're not going to do it i'm not going to do it you know so uh like i say we got to make it safe well tom you have lots of people here today who want to meet you so we're going to cut it off there but man it's been an absolute oh, hey, privilege great. and i appreciate the other interview the other uh, couple weeks ago All right. okay Thank thanks very so much, much. okay stark auto sales hundreds of insurance claim vehicles auctioned every week now with locations in Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa. Parts cars, rebuildable wrecks, damage-free theft recoveries. Bid in person, bid online from anywhere. Worldwide shipping. A better way to buy a car. Visit StarkAutoSales.com.